16 different brands, 28 different cars, and over 1,300 cars actually manufactured. You know, you go banging doors, you know. So that's touring car racing. Hello everyone and welcome to FIA Insider. My name is Paul Wallace and we're here in Morocco where we're about to take a deep dive into the world of touring cars, otherwise known as TCR for short. TCR is best known for its short action-packed racing with cars filling the grid that are derived very similar to the road production versions, which because of this makes it one of the most accessible forms of circuit racing. The concept is so successful and cost-effective that it works really well on an international level as well as a national level too. This is sprint racing, so they're going to have a lot of really close racing and it provides great value for those that want to get into racing to come and do a race like this. It's close, it's exciting, it'll be great for the spectators, it'll be great for those watching at home on TV. And uh, you know, it's, it's a perfect example of what is good touring car racing and good customer racing. So, there are so many different ways of entering. How many cars are there? How many manufacturers are there? Can you talk me through some of the numbers? Since the TCR model was actually introduced, there's been 16 different brands, 28 different cars homologated, and over 1,300 cars actually manufactured. So there's plenty of cars out racing there. Ruri, great to see you. I cannot wait to see the action. Talk to me a little bit about what goes into being the race director for such an action-packed race. It's a half an hour of uh, fully focus, uh, fully stress, which is normal. Uh, the touring cars, they bring a lot of contacts, which is normal and we accept that. The car is done, is done also for that, the bump to bump, it's, it's normal stuff for us. You see always a group of 15, 10 cars at least fighting for the win. But of course there are limits and we need to always see uh, the behaviour and then the safety, which is always the main concern for a race director. The difference between the World Endurance Championship, where races can be up to 24 hours long, versus TCR races that are such a small window, how intense is that for you as the race director to oversee everything? Because we know we need to take actions quicker. I cannot take five, six laps of safety car when I have a 12 laps race. If you go for the endurance, you have more time, you have more time to decide. Here we don't have in touring car, uh, no, that don't exist. But you've got a fascinating job. I can't wait to see you in action. I can't wait to see the cars in action. So good luck and uh, I hope your heart rate stays very calm. <laughs> Me too, uh, but uh, I don't put money on that to be honest. <laughs> awesome, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Carlos, great Hello. to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Thank you for uh, giving me an insight into the world of touring cars. Now these cars come from the road and they're now being raced around the track. What's the spec difference between the road and the TCR cars? Well, the TCR cars, they have to, to, uh, to have a big uh, reinforcement of the chassis uh, compared to the, the normal car, the road cars and uh, some tunings in the engine. These cars have a bigger brakes, specific sequential gearbox, speci specific uh, suspension, but still very close to the, the road cars. These components make that the car goes much faster than the road car. This is the, the epitome of, uh, of, of customer racing where you can go to the manufacturer of these cars, you put your money on the table and you buy the car and you take it and you race it wherever, uh, wherever you can. And you know, obviously the TCR network now is so strong that I believe in Europe alone there's 15 different championships in which you can race a TCR spec car. So you're able to uh, buy the car, race it yourself, Sometimes the manufacturers give a bit of support with engineering, with drivers. Um, it, it varies again, just depending on the level at which you want to race. Mikel, great to meet you. Yes, nice to meet you. Now this is the bit that I'm most excited about, because I've driven a lot of Hyundai end performance road cars. You're obviously a legend that drives the touring car. What's the difference between the race car and the road car in terms of a weight saving? The minimum weight 
is not so big different comparing the road car because now we are uh, 1,285 kilos, okay, which is yes. yeah, which is not so light. Yeah, I think the standard car is around uh, 1,300 kilos, so it's not a big difference yeah. the, the the weight of the cars because we have ballast to compensate every manufacturer. We need to put to some it. ballast, yeah. and as I'm very light, you know, my car yeah. this weekend. <laughs> It's heavier. Yeah, it's oh, heavier. No so it's been fascinating to speak to you. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Ted. Yes. Great to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you. The car's looking awesome. Yes. I love the color. Yeah. But the race cars are a bit more beefier than the road cars. How do you deal with, or how is the car designed to withstand damage when you're making contact with other cars? Because some of the corners are quite tight. So we don't want to stop the race because our wheel is a little bit bent or something like this. So we want it to be, you know, solid, yeah. but it can't be too heavy, you know, so it's a compromise. Would you have any idea if you took the road car for a lap here, how much slower it would be than this? I'm just going to give you the guess. It's like 10, 15 seconds. Okay. Good luck. Yeah. And I can't wait to see the car out on track. Well, that's qualifying done, not by me, but 24 hours from now, we will find out who takes the top step on the podium. It is incredibly hot in here, so that will be it from me and another episode of the FIA Insider. Let us know what you want to see next. Like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Now, I'm gonna try and start it.